Our guest today is Colonel Jennifer Opke. She is the Director of Protocol for the National Guard Bureau. As Director, she leads three protocol branches supporting the offices of Chief of Staff of the National Guard Bureau, the Director of Army National Guard, and the Director of the Air National Guard for all state partnership program social engagements with the four principles of the National Guard Bureau, as well as distinguished visitor engagements, ceremonies, and other high visibility engagements. Additionally, her team leads and approves all conference across enterprise by providing oversight and coordination with inception and inception to execution. Colonel Opke is a 2001 graduate of the United States Air Force Academy, and she is a helicopter pilot for the HA-60 Gulf and Mikes. She has over 1800 hours of flight service. Colonel Opke, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. That's <laughs> It was a lot, <laughs> but again, you've done a lot. So mm -hmm. you've also served as Director of Operations, Personnel Recovery Program Manager and Requirements Manager for Headquarters ACC Rotary Wing Programs, as well as the Ex Executive Director to the, to the Deputy Director of Requirements, ACC, and Vice Commander, ACC. You've also deployed over six times to various areas of operation, and you were awarded the Air Force Combat Action Medal for Leadership at a forward operating base attack. So awesome sauce there. Um, right now you're at the Pentagon. So how's that life? Oh, wow, it's a big maze. <laughs> it's, a big maze. Um, it's really quiet right now. I, I was expecting a lot more um, activity, but you know, with, with COVID and everything, like um, the, and the Secretary of Defense is really taking it all serious, has been for a long time, even before um, uh, Austin took office. So. Um, we're just really trying to minimize as much as we can um, any kind of like exposure or, or you know, COVID possible um, mm -hmm. super spread. Like that. So it's, it's really quiet, but it's amazing. I'm back at like live, talking strategic level stuff and I, and I love it. So I would imagine you don't get behind the, you know, the cockpit that often now that you're at the Pentagon. So is that yes, an issue do. for you? Does that bother you? No, I do. I'm going out. Really? First Yes, this is the beautiful thing about the National Guard. <laughs> and I've been told not to tell anybody about this, but it's a secret. Um, <laughs> so you still get to fly. Yeah. Yes. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So how much do you enjoy that versus being, you know, in the office? What, what What's your preference? Well, I will say that flying as a colonel is a lot different than flying as a line captain. Okay. <laughs> kind of get taken care of. Um, <laughs> The perks. <laughs> I, I like to exaggerate a little bit and say that like there's guys that come out and they get down on like on their hands and knees so I can they can I can step on their back into right the right you know that happen, no but, more climbing up steps it's actual climbing up lieutenants and stuff. <laughs> that works. <laughs> but I, I can appreciate that. <laughs> it's close to that level. Like um, <laughs> I mean, that, that's what you expect when you get that high. You know, you're like, hey, you know, I had to do that when I was lieutenant, so now I'm a colonel. You know, I get to enjoy that perk. That's it's a little bit true, but also like you know, I also miss being one of the the bros who's yeah. just volunteers to do the mission and and hack things. So it's, I I get to live both worlds, you know, um, because I'm not necessarily in their unit and not in their leadership um, chain. I get to kind of get them to relax and talk to me about things. So it's pretty cool. Okay. So you're at the Pentagon now. So let's talk about where you've been before. I know you've had a varied career. It's about 20 years. You joined in 2001. So it's a long time. A lot of places I'm sure you've been. A lot of different it's not that long. Daryl, it's not that long. Calm down. Oh, I'm at 15. It feels like a long time for me. Okay? <laughs> so personal experience. Like, I got to for myself. <laughs> Projecting a little bit. <laughs> so you haven't been in that long, but where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I started out after the Air Force Academy. Um, Columbus Air Force Base is where I went to pilot training. Um, actually, but let me back up before that. I started back out up, back as up, back up, back up. as casual lieutenant. I got to be the events manager for the football team, the Air Force okay. Academy, and that was. Super cool. Like I got to be down on the field every every Friday or every Saturday. It was just a lot of fun. So um, started out with that while I waited for pilot training. Columbus Air Force Base is where I went to pilot training. And um, right now they're snowed in. Like okay. Our, yeah. So I just got that notification from some friends. Um, then Fort Rucker because I chose the helicopter path. Um, okay. 
I don't know that I necessarily, I'm pretty sure I had the option. I could have gone fighters or something else, but I want, I really wanted to be close to the ground and be part of that. So um, went helicopters, Fort Rucker, then Albuquerque, New Mexico. And then uh, after Albuquerque, New Mexico, Nellis Air Force Base was my very first operational base in Las Vegas. <sighs> It was a great yeah. assignment. It was a great assignment. Not because of it's Las Vegas. Calm down, everybody. Like, no, um, I, we were near the weapons school, which is kind of like the top gun of the Air Force, right? Plus tests. I mean, I got fully immersed in everything that was H-60. It was really amazing. Anything that was um, tactically oriented to, to prosecuting the mission, I really right. got to like get a full uh, dose of that. So it was really cool. Went from there to uh, Kadena Air Force Base in mm. Okinawa. Yeah, hardship. <laughs> so tough. You know, so it's a hard life, but somebody's got to live it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and <I> <laughs> My first assignment was supposed to have been Japan, but that got canceled and I got sent to author. So, yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for your service. I, I do what I can. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, went to, um, from there, I went back to N Nellis to be part of the test squadron. Um, I was an operational test pilot, which was ridiculously cool, like all the things yeah. I got to do and get immersed in there. Um, I was supposed to go back to an operational unit, but somebody pulled um, some strings. They're like, Jen is the right person to be in test right now. She has the most operational experience. I had just come off of where that um, Air Force um, comedy, uh, combat medal came from. So I had a lot of um, combat experience. And so I brought that with me to test. Uh, I think that really helped our, our community uh, personal assessment. Right. And then uh, went to Langley Air Force Base after that to be on staff, then Langley to Moody Air Force Base, and then mm -hmm. Moody Air Force Base to Maxwell Air Force Base, where I was the squadron commander of officer training school. Nice. And happy to answer any questions about that to anybody who's listening <laughs> to this, because that's a big step is just getting your commission. Right. And then, um, and then I, I was able to separate and join the Air National Guard in Jacksonville, Florida. I was the only helicopter pilot in an F-15 unit, which was, nice. it, yeah, it was fun. Um, they, and when I first got there, everybody's like, oh, we don't like pilots. And then they're like, oh, we don't like fighter pilots. So Right. We like her. Yeah. <laughs> She's all right. Yeah. Uh, and, and I got picked up for this job. So just there you go. done a bunch of, a bunch of things. Yeah. Super, well, that's awesome. super yeah, humble to have been able to experience all those things and, and happy to share with anybody who's listening. Um, you know, in the future as I think about how this is going to be projected, I, I just open book. Okay. So when you joined the academy, did you know you wanted to be a pilot or did you just join, you know, because you wanted to serve? Like what was your motivation for joining the Air Force? I wanted, to join, I wanted to serve. Um, my dad was in the army. I really right. wanted to go to West Point, but I don't know if how many people have heard this, but army parents make the best Air Force recruiters. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and so for any girl dads that are out there, my, my dad uh, did a, a fantastic genius thing. Um, he set me up to fly out to the Air Force Academy 7 a.m. the next mm -hmm. day after prom. So oh. Okay, <laughs> couldn't even sleep in and enjoy, you know, the glow. <laughs> very smart, like, right, I, I knew that I, and he knew that I was very, um, we call it type A, you know, but very right. committed to my education. And so um, I didn't stay out late for prom, I didn't okay. do shenanigans, I was home by 11, so I could get on that plane at 7 a.m. So um, we got out to the Air Force Academy and, and I just, I fell in love with that campus. I mean, nothing against West Point. It's a great school. And I, and I kind of, you know, there's a part of me still that wishes that I'd gone. But then I think about like, I get to stay in hotels when I go on trips and I get to <laughs> eat pretty good food and I get to wear this flight suit. Like, yeah, it's, it's a bit of all right. It was, a, it was a decent choice in my life. So um, at that time, going to the Air Force Academy, everyone that graduated pretty much got a pilot slot. It's, it's not that way now, but you know, it goes in cycles. Um, and, uh, and so I just graduated and, and got an immediate pilot slot. Uh, and I knew that I, I knew that I didn't want, not that I didn't, but I was not feeling the, the fixed wing thing. I definitely wanted to be more army and, and the, going H 60s is what got me there. Okay. Was, yeah. So H 60 versus the hog, like, how'd you make, ah! yeah how'd you make that distinction oh so i mean okay i, I chose h60s just because i love helicopters and i thought that was just a really cool mission being down there close to the ground being as close as i could to to the fight um 
I've flown the F-16, I've flown the F-15, and my friends who I get done flying with, when I get to the ground, I'm like, this is the easiest aircraft I've ever flown. And they're like, don't, t- shush, Jen, don't tell anybody. We've <laughs> got a lot of secrets today. Uh, right. <laughs> easy aircraft. We, pre- we appreciate that, Leo. We got to educate the people. <laughs> yeah, I should, yeah, I'm not supposed to tell anybody, but, and I probably won't get any more incentive rides, but right. it, yeah. Uh, C-130 we saw your video. Is- we don't like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my fighter pilot buddies might say, uh, Jen, you're out of the club. Honey. Out of the club. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm That's here okay. We you. appreciate it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was an easy choice for me. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you've got your HA-60. You said you've done 15s and 16s. Um, mm-hmm. Was there ever a point where you felt you wanted to try something different that you wanted to move over to the fixed wing at any point? Or did you were like, this is it, you know, AJ 60s, this is my life. I think if I was going to do anything different, it would be uh, to try and join the special operations aviation regiment in the okay. army. Okay. Um, and fly little birds and get even closer to, to the combat. I just, it, there's just something so exhilarating about like all the training that you do and then when you're in it and you're executing and and you feel the efficacy of what you've just learned how to do it just there is just no feeling better and then also the rescue mission right like right. I think you're very familiar with like pick you know that you're going to do something that's going to change somebody's life every right. time you fly like whoa there, there's no other mission like that I, you know, I, 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 I can appreciate that because I've, I've been in rescue now. I've done special tactics for this. I've worked with uh, combat controllers, TACPs, PJs. I've hit the gambit of, you know, working with the ground pounders and stuff. So I understand 100% that love and that feeling of like really being involved with something that you can see the immediate effects of. Yeah. And you know, you can talk to the special tactics thing and you can talk to the combat controller thing. Like it's a brotherhood and, yeah. and I mean, brotherhood, not in, a, in like the gender fight way, like right. as in, we're family, like some of my closest friends that I will keep forever for the rest of my life are those dudes, those special forces dudes that I was in the things with. Right. right. Like, Cause we built a trust and a, an a ability to kind of just like communicate on levels that, I'll, I'll never cheat with anybody else. Yeah, yeah, I can appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's pretty spot on to the same way that you know we feel and we talk about each other. You know, it's guys I've known for the entire time I've been in. I talk to all the time. You know, groomsmen and everything else in my wedding. You know, guys yeah. you, you form a really really tight bond with. Yes, and and I think it's important, like right now, especially um, to kind of mention, given this event, that. Like I am part of that. Like it doesn't matter this, you know, right. whatever I look like. It is. It's totally based on on what we've done together. Period. Yeah. You know, um, we love one another and we care about one another, and and it doesn't matter, man, woman, um, anyone who's involved, you no know, race, ethnic, creed, whatever. It's just it's about just achieving things together. And there, I, I don't know. It's yeah. just incredible, incredible community to be part of. Have you, have you ever had any negative, you know, connotations with you being a woman or female pilot, you know, when you come to a unit that, oh, she can't cut it, or she's not really down, you know, or we got to, you know, act a little differently because now she's around and all that kind of stuff. Has, has that ever been an issue for you that you've had to overcome? Okay. So that's part of the reason that Carrie and I started our nonprofit, the Moon Project, because we are sick of girls just accepting that, right? Like, right. Um, so sure, every you, if you flip the tables, like think about joining a group of girls of women, mm-hmm. you know, as a man, the right. the things that would happen in that kind of scenario, like just flip the script. It, it's just a human nature thing to do. Um, I I don't necessarily think it's nefarious. It's just look, you're different from wh- what we are, and we are not ready to accept that you can do what we can do. So, you know, we're gonna do some things that are maybe juvenile or or dumb, just just to make ourselves feel better <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> make us feel like we're legit so um so you know if you take it with that perspective and you show up to some place and i yes lots of places lots of people and i could go on about all the stories but instead of talking about those stories and those instances that i've experienced i just really want to like make it clear that like 
it's, it's just not acceptable behavior. And it doesn't matter what you look like when you step into those, those situations and someone treats you that way, like, just don't accept it. Just don't accept it. Like, I get it. Like, you don't think that I belong. Well, I'm here and I do belong and I know I belong. So I'll, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna push that aside and just do my job and achieve what I want to achieve without worrying about what you're saying outside. Like, it doesn't matter. It's all about what's in here. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. That's because humans are going to be humans, right? Like we can't control other people. All we can do is control ourselves. And, um, it's every now I will, like, <laughs> I will, like, there's some things that I will make clear very front up front when I'm getting into a situation, you know, like I can't stand when people finish my sentences. Like that was a big thing today for me at work. Like, I just cannot stand that. Like nobody knows what I'm going to say. And, and it's usually, it's usually men that do okay. that. But today it was a female and but you know it's just human nature and I could have taken like the victim like oh I'm the girl so they want to finish my sentences no it's just right. sometimes just really um high achieving people want to get to the point or think that they know what you're going to say and it's just human nature so I don't know I, I feel like a lot of this the things that are kind of modern modernly happening a, a little bit are overplayed just because of identity politics so okay Okay. So you said you joined because, you know, you follow your father and everything else. Um, but while you were in, did you have anybody that you looked up to? Did you have any mentors or people that helped guide you through your career that helped turn you into the amazing leader that you are now? Oh, gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so one of the most significant people in my life that I, I wrote about once was uh, General Jameson, uh, Verilyn Jameson. Uh, she was the intel uh, two star at ACC, and okay. um, you know I, I'm air crew. I'm the like gritty, nitty gritty. Like I want to throw it in your face that I'm air crew, so I wear my flight suit a lot. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I got yelled. I can at understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I got yelled at almost every day because they're like, Jen, you're on staff. You're at the upper levels. You need to wear your ABUs like everybody else. And I'm like, no, like I. This is something I did. This yeah. is. I me. earned this. Yeah, I earned this. Yeah. And, um, and so one day, uh, General Jameson came up to me. She's like, Jen, I love what you're doing. I love that you still are who you are and you're genuine and you keep wearing your flight suit. She said, when she was going through basic training, she didn't even have the option to go to pilot training. So, you know, that impacted me so significantly. And, and uh, I really looked up to her in that moment because I was like, well, yeah, I had no idea that I was sending a message to somebody who's senior to me, uh, as well as the, the junior um, people to me. So uh, she, she was a good mentor. She's always been a great mentor. And, and you know, um, there's, other, there's another uh, woman, Joan Garbett, who was a colonel. She was the A1 personnel officer. And in a staff meeting after, <laughs> after a, a pretty bad um, presentation by someone, she looked at me and she said, Jen, you will never give a presentation like that. <laughs> yeah okay. got it yeah, <laughs> yeah I've, I've had i've had a couple of those like you will never give a briefing like that again or you will never produce a product like that and you're just like no i wasn't going to that was pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> i have no intention of being that person and then you know on on um on the other side uh, you know colonel cook bones cook is mm -hmm. a great friend of mine who also in many ways, whether he knows it or not, because he's senior to me by a year or two, is also kind of like a, a, a mentor to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just really grateful for anybody that's willing to give me advice. You know, we have two ears and one mouth yeah. for a reason. So I, I try as hard as I can to just kind of tune in and listen to people because sometimes it's a little over the top of what they want to tell you, but also it's a little, a little explaining. No yeah, <laughs> a little mansplaining, a little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But also it's like genuine information that could, could be something useful in the future. Yeah. Okay. So I don't want to keep you too much longer because I know you're busy and all that, but um, finish off with any advice you might have for someone who might want to follow in your footsteps or might have an interest or a thought that maybe they can do what you're doing. Like, what would you say to someone who's considering be, a career in the Air Force? Be open to opportunity always open for opportunity. Um, sometimes it comes in the most random, uh, weird ways, but you know, 
don't turn down an opportunity because you're because of fear or mm -hmm. because of judgment or because of um, underestimating yourself. Like I, there's, there's just so many things out there that are available to everyone every day that we pass by on the street. Sometimes we don't even realize, you know, um, I would say probably biggest thing for me was just to start talking to people. Like, I, I mean, I, I project a very open, confident person because I've kept practicing being an open and confident person, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, it just takes practice and takes interactions with people and you just never know what opportunities lie with with meeting people and talking to people and, and inviting yourself to like their events. Like there's Civil Air Patrol, there's ROTC, there's, um, there's a lot of nonprofits out there that are really trying to give people experiences in aviation and, and just do it. There's, there's just nothing. The worst that anybody can ever say is no. Right. You know, they can't take away your birthday. They can't send you to Afghanistan. I mean, they could. They send you <laughs> <laughs> Some people <laughs> can. <laughs> it's not the worst thing, you know, to be sent. Uh, it's not the worst thing. Another opportunity. So, yeah. um, I would, I would say there's one um, person that really impacted me once when I was in Qatar, I was on staff and I was the only helicopter pilot and the first female in this office. And one of the guys just kind of dumped a task on me. He's like, Jen, I just, you just need to like do all this missile management and, and um, it was uh, all the weapons, weaponeering things in theater and just mm -hmm. manage where these things are and tell us and track it. And I'm like, it's not my job. Like, right. <laughs> I don't care where the tea lambs are. Like I just, I'm just helicopter pilots. And um, one of the maintenance officers, he's a group commander. And he said, we were at lunch one day and he just says, Jen, like that's an opportunity for you to learn a, a subject that you would never have access to otherwise. Right. Like, think about that, right? Like, so approaching it that way, instead of like, it's just not my job, but like, look at the, what could I glean from this that will, proved to be very fruitful in the future. And it did. I mean, it was very, it, it helped me a lot in conversations later on when senior leaders were talking about things that involved those, those items in theater. And, and I had the answers like right there, you know, yeah. and they're like, what the heck, Jazz helicopter pilot? Why does she know these things? I'm like, yeah, because I'm good, you know, yeah. <laughs> but it, you I, there's, know. there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that that's, I had to learn that, you know, as a young airman, because, you know, we get tasked with so many random things. And you're just like, that is literally not what I'm supposed to do. Like, I have a task I'm yes. working on, and now I'm supposed to be doing this other thing that has absolutely nothing to do with the first thing. But then you look at it and you're like, I can use that information later on down the road somewhere. Or like you were saying, you know, someone else having a conversation about that topic. And you're like, hey, I know what they're talking about. They might not be talking to me directly or asking me questions about it, but at least I know what they're talking about. So we sort of, I'm in the loop. Yes, yes. Yeah. And waking up every day with the attitude of like, every minute is precious. Right. Every minute is precious. And every minute you let go by without um, doing something that's positive in your life and having a positive attitude about it, like you're just wasting it. So uh, that's that's my advice I, I love what I do I love the things that I get to do I get loved the people I get to meet like you um every day it's just amazing uh, it's, it's such a beautiful thing that we get to do to live life every day so cool. well that's awesome that's that's a great way to, to end this I so I want to thank you again for your time and your consideration and participating in this event for us and hope okay. you have a great Air Force day <laughs> uh, one more thing before we cut off what like this education is important but flying is important to her. Important to her. <laughs>